not more than 30 to 40,000. So when all you put all these things together and slowly and gradually, you also impress upon them that it's a noble cause. People joined us at a very less wages at some other vacations also because our working hours are confined from 9 to 2. So 9 to 2, people would come and they perform their duties. And in the afternoon, the lower employees, those who work with us, they have another vocation in the afternoon, another work to do. So that's how this uh, cost right from the beginning has kept that way. Because high salaried people, when they join these NGOs, the civil organization, this has been the practice in our country and also in the outside world, they join at a very high cost. So that cost is not there uh, in our things, the, you know, in our uh, uh, working especially. Only the doctors in the villages, they cost us a little more than that because that is a far-flung area where they, they don't have any other thing to do. They don't have another second uh, like uh, time to work for their professions. So that's why we had to pay. There we almost pay them to 60,000 to even uh, not more than 70,000 that we pay them there even. Um, that was very good. Uh, obviously the passion is one thing. Yes. And the encouragement of realizing them that it's a noble and just cause. Just cause. That's one of the things. But culturally, we have an issue in Pakistan that is uh, we are lacking customer service when it comes down to especially with the destitute and the vulnerable people. Uh, do you have any structure in your organization where you make sure that the people who are being treated are not treated as if this is a favor to them versus this is a favor to the organization by them coming to your facilities? Absolutely not, because uh, when they come to us, we don't even ask them question who you are. Because our religion does not say, if somebody comes to you, that we just ask them at the window, at the reception point, the patient is only asked his name. And then we ask him, can you pay the registration fee of 30 rupees or 50 rupees? If he says no, I am poor, I cannot even pay this registration fee. We do not ask him second question. We say, okay, no problem. You still, you will get the treatment. But those who say that I can pay these 30 rupees or 50 rupees, so or even maximum is 50. Mm -hmm. So less than that, whatever he pays, that is accepted <clears throat> from him. So when he says that, we accept that from him and then his consultation with the doctors and his medicines, those are totally free. His tests are totally free. But if there are some affluent people, because we have good facilities, mm -hmm. and some affluent people uh, also attend the, the these uh, medical centers, when they come and they say, they say, we want to pay so that this money is utilized for other poor people. For other people, absolutely. So, so that, that's a brilliant structure. Uh, you know, entertaining one million people is not easy. And obviously, it, there's a huge amount of force that is required behind that to deliver that operation. That is another thing. Now, the finances is the biggest challenge that uh, for any organization to function uh, to the best of its mission and, and the vision that the organization has. Have you ever faced the challenges of, uh, you know, that your growth has been exponential? But at the same time, you need to have the uh, finances to support that growth. Have you been very in a, in a comfortable zone from the get-go or you have faced some challenges and how do you overcome those? Let me tell you first one thing. Yeah. That is inbuilt in me. When you are doing something for the player of Allah, for the poor people, Allah does not put you in any difficulty. He always arranges funds for you. The first thing, why I say that, mm. because I worked in an, a government organization, as you mentioned, Pakistan Battle Mall. Mm. Everybody says in government there is a financial constraints, there are economy problems and this and that. But let me tell you, whatever I did, whatever level I took that, uh, I took that organization from 2 to 3 billion to 40 billion and Allah arranged that money 
I never felt difficulty in my times because it is from the leadership. If your leadership is honest and people working around you are honest, they, there are no financial constraints. Similarly, mm -hmm. when I came to this organization, I had this thing in my, in my mind. I am the financial uh, member finance. I never felt very uncovered. We never stopped any activity. Mm -hmm. We only cut short on certain things that we should slow down the expansion. That was only during the period of COVID. When we had the sufficient reserve, always we keep sufficient reserve for at least for one year reserve we keep to run our operations. That is, you can call it an endowment. Mm -hmm. You can call out uh, the reserve as in army we call it. Endowment is in the terms of these NGOs. Mm -hmm. So that uh, remains our endowment mm -hmm. and we kept on working for that. We keep on expanding our fundraising network and we go to the people and people themselves come to us in such a way that they surprise us. Amazing. Like this time when we have come here in Dallas last time when we came first time the enthusiasm was not that way. But this time when we felt that we were, uh, you know, double-minded uh, about coming, that we are going immediately after the, you know, COVID. People are also, you know, there is a donor fatigue prevailing in, uh, in the countries outside. And maybe our brothers, uh, Pakistanis, they, they have back home problem also. They must be sending money to it. We were double-minded, but when we discussed, we lose our contacts with the donors. We started, alhamdulillah, we said, no problem, we'll go. Even if we come back empty-handed, still that may be, Allah feels that way. And we believed in that prayer of Moses when he visited Hazrat Shweb. He says, Rabbi inni lima anzalta alayya min khairan fakir. Oh God, whatever you give me at this time, that is your, that is acceptable to us. So we came with that spirit outside and we got amazing results at Chicago. Let me tell you, Chicago last time, we had just uh, 200,000. This time it was 200,000 plus. And similarly, LA, we just have four, five or 6,000, not more than this, but this time 40,000. And alham Alhamdulillah, with your kind efforts and people like you are the are our great assets. The passionate people. The passionate people are those, as Iqbal says, darde dil ke vaste paida kiya insan ko. Varna taat ke liye kuch kam nate karu biyan. You are that passionate person who really impressed upon the people last night because the leader from the community, when he stands up, and calls the people for donation, that makes all the difference. Uh, it is your credibility in the community around. Jazakallah khair, that's very, I'm very humbled by that. Uh, you know, honestly, when, when we converse with you and we talk to you, I, it feels like, am I talking to a soldier, a humanitarian, or a religious scholar, or someone who is a fan of Iqbal? Uh, who is Brigadier Safras? This is from my, you asked a very difficult question. But I got this motivation from my mother. My mother, right from the beginning, taught me because she was a big helping hand in our community where I lived in my village in Gujarat. She could never see anybody in distress. I learned from there. And that thing really and I also learned from her Salah we have to be firm on that be firm on that be firm on Salah remember Allah Allah will not cause any difficulty he will give you the solution of your problems so that motivated me that time mm -hmm. and if that motivation kept me then my motivation for coming to Al Muswa Trust is the condition of people 
the condition of poor uh, lot of the country the in uh, pakistan when i was working in pakistan baitul mal because there i was working in very diverse field where people needing financial help where people needing educational help where people needing medical help so all these three spheres i worked and this program that uh, you see benazir income sport program it was actually started as a food sport program mm -hmm. at the time of uh, pervez musharraf and i was the one that very time associated with it we evolved it with dr atiya natullah mm -hmm. and then we prepared a 2 million household data of poor of the country and that was absolutely a fine data with we i filtered over over a period of time said all riff rap gets out of it mm 